All right, welcome back to Steve's Vintage Model Builds. Uh, this is my first video uh, since the famous, infamous SR-71 uh, after build review and info session. Uh, I had a live chat and Peter Oxley, Mrs. O, and quite a few others joined in. I think everybody enjoyed it, found it interesting and informative, uh, which is my goal here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, 349 subscribers now, and uh, thank you very much to everyone. Uh, as I always say, and you may get tired of hearing of, of it, hearing it, but uh, I, I know everyone's time is valuable, and I appreciate any of it that uh, you spend with me and my channel. Hope you find it interesting, helpful, informative, uh, and uh, with a touch of humor sometimes, I hope. Okay, so today, as you see, uh, first of all, a shout out to Zinzan Scale Modeling. Uh, he's currently doing a build on the, on this, the Hasegawa 148 uh, Unmanned Space Probe Voyager. And as always, he does beautiful work and he's doing a great job on the kit. Uh, I'm just going to do a review and probably an, an after build review. Um, but if you're interested in checking out the actual build, uh, slide by uh, Zinzan, that's Z A N Z A N, no, Z I N Z A N, scale modeling. And I'll also put a link in the description for this. And as I said, he does beautiful work. His kit. Uh, it came with a whole rack of uh, PE, uh, of which I am not a fan. And but I was I was so intrigued by it and so impressed by it, how it was going together for him that I just had to get one. So I did. Uh, and then uh, when I got the kit, I realized that his was a little more recent version with the PE, and mine didn't have PE. Oh, boo-hoo, isn't that too bad? <laughs> uh, whatever PE there might have been, uh, I'm sure that I can do uh, with some other type of metallic paint. Since most of the time you have to sand down the PE and prime it and then paint it anyways. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the only advantage is you can bend some parts. But, uh, you know, if anybody knows me and my channel, I'm not that picky about things. But as I said, Zinzan does a beautiful job on all of that stuff. And uh, he's, uh, he's really good at fabricating and, and uh, uh, does some great videos. He's a lot of fun. So uh, check out his, his channel if you, if you haven't already. Okay, so uh, as I said today, we've got the, uh, the Hasegawa uh, 148 uh, Science World Sponsored. Unmanned Space Probe Voyager. Alright, and so uh, it's uh, Hasegawa catalog number SW02. That's Sierra Whiskey 02. And the copyright date here is 2012. Here on the side, uh, there's uh, uh, photographs of the completed model, uh, as well as a sprue map, which is nice. And on the front here indicates model length uh, 394 millimeters uh, with 86 pieces. Uh, the reason it's so long is because of the, the huge, the long antenna here. Um, and so. I'm going to read what they put on the side of the box here, although it's a little bit outdated. I'll, uh, I'll be adding uh, some more. So uh, they say here, Voyager 1 and 2 unmanned space probes were launched into space in 1977 as part of the Voyager program. Voyager 1 was launched on September 5th, 1977, and Voyager 2 was launched on August 20th of that year. So uh, Voyager 2 was actually launched first. 
And the reason for that was that it was going to be reaching Jupiter first uh, because of the different routes they were programmed to take. Voyager 1 collected valuable data uh, from its near approaches to Jupiter and Saturn and several of their moons, while Voyager 2 collected similarly valuable data from Uranus and Neptune and several of their moons as well. The Voyager probes have so far made possible many astounding discoveries. As of uh, June 2012, uh, Voyager 1 is, was some 16 billion kilometers from the Sun. And the probes have made uh, numerous astounding discoveries. Uh, the Voyager 1 is moving away at a speed relative to the Sun's position of 17.06 kilometers per second. Voyager 2 is now some 14.7 billion kilometers from the Sun, uh, moving away at a speed of 15.46 kilometers per second. On board both Voyager probes are gold-plated copper records titled Sounds of Earth. Uh, recorded on them are various sounds from nature as well as greetings in 55 uh, different Earth languages. Uh, these recordings were attached to the Voyager probes in anticipation that they may someday be found and decoded by intelligent extraterrestrial life. So as of uh, 2023, Voyager 1 is uh, moving away at uh, 38,027 miles per hour and is 24,211,500,000 kilometers from the Sun. On August 25th, 2012, data from Voyager 1 indicated that it, ha it had entered interstellar space. And uh, that means that it, uh, it passed uh, outside of the sun's heliosphere and outside of our solar system. And I guess the next stop is Andromeda. As of 2023, Voyager 2 is moving at 34,391 miles per hour and is 20,000,000,000. 203,800,000 kilometers from the Sun. And as of uh, 5 November 2019, Voyager 2 indicated that it also had entered interstellar space. On 4 November 2019, scientists reported that on 5 November 2018, the Voyager 2 probe had officially reached the interstellar medium a region of outer space beyond the influence of the solar wind, as did Voyager in 2012. Although the Voyagers have moved beyond the influence of the solar wind, they still have a long way to go before exiting the solar system. Whoops, my mistake. Uh, NASA indicates if we design our solar system as the sun and everything that primarily orbits the sun, Voyager 1 will remain within the confines of the solar system until it emerges from the Oort cloud in another 14,000 to 28,000 years. Ah, the Oort cloud. I forgot about the Oort cloud. And it's way out there, baby, way out there. Data and photographs collected by the Voyager's cameras, uh, magnometers, and other instruments revealed unknown details about each of the four giant planets and their moons. Close-up images from the spacecraft charted Jupiter's complex cloud forms, winds and storm systems, and discovered volcanic activity on its moon Io. Saturn's rings were found to have enigmatic braids, kinks, and spokes, and are to be accompanied by and, and are fa were found to be accompanied by myriad ringlets. At Uranus, Voyager 2 discovered a substantial magnetic field around the planet and ten more moons. Its flyby of Neptune uncovered three rings and six hitherto unknown moons, a planetary magnetic field and complex, widely distributed auroras. As of 2023, Voyager 2 remains the only spacecraft to have ever visited the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. In August 2018, NASA confirmed, based on results by the New Horizons spacecraft, the existence of a hydrogen wall at the outer edges of the solar system that was first detected in 1992 by the two Voyager spacecraft. The 
Voyager spe spacecraft were built at the uh, Joint uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, funded by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which also financed the launches, launches from Cape Canaveral, Florida, their tracking, and everything else concerning the probes. This was 1977, remember. Cost of the original program was $865 million, with the later added Voyager interstellar mission costing an extra $30 million. Uh, both have stayed in contact far longer than they were ever expected to be, and uh, they've also gone much farther and survived. Um, and so, um, technology from the 70s is still holding up and still sending information back from the outer reaches of our solar system. That's pretty amazing stuff as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so uh, let's get into her here. There is no cellophane no wrap. Just tape. Rather old looking tape, but it might just be naturally yellow. <laughs> there we go. And of course, Star Trek fans will remember the uh, the Star Trek the motion picture, uh, where uh, after centuries and centuries, the Enterprise encountered V'ger, and the rest is history, as they say. I don't think I need to tell anybody that story. It's pretty incredible stuff for the very far-reaching thought-wise. Okay, we'll get to this after. That's kind of cool. Okay. I've got a couple Hasegawa kits. I started the Akagi and I've got their F-18 Hornet um, in the stash, ready to go. But I think this and the Saturn V are going to come first. Uh, you can check out my, my channel on Scalemates so you can see all the projects underway there. As I mentioned, I completed the uh, SR-71. Very pleased with that model. Uh, and uh, started the uh, Panzerkampfwagen II from Tamiya. It was a very simple kit. I mostly put it together last night. <laughs> in a couple hours. Great, great starter kit, but still a lovely kit. And uh, five figures. Uh, here they are, all primed and ready to be painted up. Okay, so uh, let's see what we get here. Of course, we get an instruction booklet. We'll deal with that after. And we get this beautiful card. with all sorts of very interesting information, mostly in Japanese. Uh, but they do give you, uh, uh, they do give you the, 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 the different parts of the, of the, of the probe itself. Uh, the planetary radio astronomy and plasma wave antenna, the radio isotope thermoelectric generator, uh, that's what powers it, I guess. Uh, the golden record, as I mentioned. Uh, the magnetometer boom, which is which is like huge. I don't know how far it goes out, but it goes out a long ways. Uh, there's the high gain antenna, cosmic ray subsystem, plasma investigation array, low energy charge particle detector, and narrow angle camera and wide angle camera. And on this side, it shows uh, where the probes are relative to the sun, uh, but it, this is all in Japanese. So, but uh, pictures tell a thousand words, so there you go. And so, very interesting, nice of them to do that. Okay. 
Well, that was the other thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. Amazon. Uh, so, yeah, I had seen the... I saw... saw Zin Zan's video there, and I was keeping an eye out for it. Anyways, I looked it up again, and... Well, don't you know, it was on sale. 20% off. Plus free next day delivery so heck you know they made me do it they really did make me do it <laughs> okay so oh yeah and I should mention that the cost of the kit was approximately $45 and so we got three sprues here two black and one white no photo etch which I'm not sad about as I mentioned wow look at that look at that antenna all one piece there Wow, look at that. Yeah. Gonna have to be careful with that, along with a lot of other stuff. Okay, so uh, let's see. So, let's see. Okay. So, here we've got sprue A. So we've got sprue A, and we've got the body of the spacecraft, and uh, looks like we've got the base here, other bits and pieces, odds and ends, odds and sods, lots of tiny little pieces, everything looks beautiful, I'm not seeing any flash at all, and there's some very delicate parts here, they're all still attached, no problems. And then we've got sprue B here, and uh, there's the long antenna, all the various bits and bits and pieces and parts. And lastly here we have the, uh, the antenna dish, and some other parts on C including this super long antenna which we'll be very careful with because if you break that the only option you have is to pull one out of some other white plastic if you can the heat and pull method oh and this is kind of fun uh, I'm not going to open this but you get this little stand and it's it's the earth it's you can you can't see it on the on, through the plastic here but um you know it's got the continents and everything and uh there's a piece of stainless steel wire and they also include a little alien with the golden record <laughs> and so i don't know if you can see him there can you see can you see the little alien there he is yeah. so uh I'm half thinking to put the little alien with my SR-71. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, and so now... Okay, we've got the fold-out pamphlet style here. And it's all in black and white. And got some photographs of the completed model and there it is on its little stand that's kind of a cool little thing okay and they they provide a, an extensive uh, right up here uh, the most significant things beyond what I've already said is they were both identical and uh, the reason they were launched at the dates they were launched in 1977 was that uh, um, all the planetary bodies were aligned so that they could uh, take advantage of the slingshot effect. Uh, they would save fuel and obviously it's allowed them to go much farther than they, they expected. Okay. So, what do we get here? Looks like we get 12, 12 steps 
and very extensive painting. And we get a nice sprue map. It indicates here six colors. White, silver, copper, flat black, sandy yellow, and semi-gloss black. Surprise there's no gold there. Anyways, okay. And so we'll go through it here step by step. Uh, there's the high gain antenna assembly here. And the back assembly, or the base, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, here's the body and the bus housing electronics assembly. The housing mast assembly, the meter unit assembly, uh, there's some sub assemblies here, uh, and uh, they give the yeah they give the various colors one ninety two. And they don't indicate uh, what brand of paint. Uh, so I would expect it's probably Mr. Hobby. Um, but they're all pretty standard, pretty standard colors. Uh, we go to number six, the uh, meter unit assembly, or mass assembly. The uh, RTG assembly. They, they say housing parts installation, but they spell housing H-A-U, uh, but that's okay. Uh, and then the meter unit mass installation, high field magnetometer assembly. Lots of little tiny little pieces here. I'm glad I'm not dealing with any uh, photo edge with this here. Um, but still, it looks like a pretty easy build. You easily go step by step. And these instructions aren't and as busy as Hasegawa's sometimes are. And so, yeah. So uh, then it gives you all the sub-assemblies and how to put what where and da-da-da. The low-field magnetometer assembly. Da-da-da-da. And the display stand installation. You can see here. Uh, you can see here that you can see the the continents, or at least part of the Earth, anyways. So uh, I'll see what I can do about painting that up. Although the 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 blue, royal blue, looks very nice, big blue marble. Um, but yeah, I'll have to figure out how to how to paint those up. Okay, and lots of notes here. Be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. And uh, then we get all sorts of pro We've got one, two, three, four, five, six different angles or profiles uh, with, the, uh, with the painting instructions. Uh, here, this will be fun. The little cross pieces are copper, uh, whereas the inside is black. Uh, so uh, that'll be uh, that'll be good for a, an extra OCD day when it's pouring rain outside. Okay, and then at the back here, although it's not included, uh, well, there'd be it's sort of. There's a little disc there, but um, I think the one is in Zan's building. It's part of the photo etch. It has the 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 golden record, which was copper coated in gold, and uh, you know gives a gives a legend as to what everything is, uh, the the center of the galaxy and our sun relative to it. In other words, where it came from, uh, how to play back, how to play back time record. Da 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 da. -da. So, anyways, um, yeah, so there you go.
Okay, so we'll keep this to about 30 minutes, I expect. Alright, so uh, we're at ratings time now. And as always, I'll put up a card on how I rate a kit and the criteria that I use. It's a 12-point system, 10 standard points. Uh, four categories, quarter point bonus per category for any wow factors. And up to one full point for value. And I, 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 I relate value to how many hours of entertainment I'm going to get out of it. Excuse me, not frustration, um, relative to the cost. So, for example, a uh, $45 kit, uh, if I, you know, I, as always, I take my time and say 10 hours, start to finish. Uh, that's four and a half dollars an hour, which is a pretty tough deal to beat. Okay, so um, packaging. Uh, two and a quarter points, uh, two full points for the packaging. Uh, it was a good sturdy box, top opener. Uh, no bashes, no dents, no problems. Um, uh, the box art is nice. And uh, you get the sprue map, uh, photos of the completed model on its stand. Uh, as well as a, a brief uh, summary of of the uh, the subject of the kit. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's a full two points there, uh, plus a quarter. And for the sprues, uh, full two points there. Uh, there was uh, no flash that I could see, uh, no problems with molding bubbles, holes, nubs, recesses, any of that stuff. And yeah, so and a quarter point bonus point there for being perfect. Parts get a full three points. Uh, quality of plastic looks good. Uh, details nice. There were no warped or broken parts. Uh, there's no decals, but I'm not going to fault them for that because there's no decals on the actual probes. Uh, I expect anything they. First of all, they wouldn't want to put anything on the, you know, the antennae or anything that would uh, interfere. And uh, it would probably all get burned off by cosmic rays anyways. So, so three points for that. Uh, instructions, all in black and white. Um, so, two, 2.75 there. Uh, but I give a quarter point for, for all those profiles. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm pleased and impressed. Uh, the, the instructions were clear. Uh, they were laid out uh, nicely. And everything looked easy to understand. So that's a full three there. And I'm going to give it a half, half a point uh, for value. Uh, it would have only been a quarter point, but uh, I give them uh, an extra quarter for the... Uh, the cool little little uh, little Earth stand and alien. <laughs> okay, and so that brings us to a total of 11. 11 out of 12. So, um, uh, although I've been struggling with the Akagi kit, uh, it may be time for me to go back to it now that I've got a bit more model building under my belt. It might be a little easier for me to deal with. And uh, this will be a nice kit, and it'll go side by side with the Saturn V rocket. Um, so uh, that's going to be pretty cool. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, thanks to everyone who's joining me. And I'm going to publish this one right away. And Peter Oxley's uh, been under the weather, and so he hasn't been able to publish anything. So uh, uh, me and my, my, my own... Humble, pathetic, uh, attempting to be helpful way. I'll be putting a couple things up for your entertainment. And as I always say, you know, you know, if if, if you don't like the content, then you can just uh, you can just play it, and it'll it'll help you with your insomnia, and put you to sleep like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, thanks again to everyone, Peter. I hope you get well real soon. Always a shout out to uh, Terry Senior at Hobby Barn. 
glad to know you're home, buddy. And uh, I'm working on that uh, 40 Ford. Uh, it's coming along real well. I didn't get it done for this weekend, but it should be done later this week. And I think you're going to be real happy. Uh, I'm going to do a, an after build uh, uh, show and review on it. And I'll also send you some, uh, some pictures uh, by email. All right. So uh, thanks again to everyone. I appreciate everyone's time. And we will see you next time. Bye now.